This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Here's everything we have to look forward to from PlayStation this summer. How's it going everyone? Welcome to PS Ready. This is a different video. It's not a news video. It is a summer preview of everything we have to look forward to from PlayStation from now, May 8th through the end of the year. So the first thing I think I should talk about is definitely this upcoming PlayStation Showcase. At the time of filming this video, it hasn't been officially announced, but we've gotten so many leaks about it lately that I'm just assuming it's happening on the leaked date that we got. So Jeff Grubb, uh, he said that it's going to happen the week of May 25th, and that sounds like it's lining up with everything we've heard from every other big leaker out there. It's before Xbox's show, it's before the Summer Games Fest, and it's before Final Fantasy 16. So in my opinion, at least, that seems very believable. Now, as for what we're going to see at this showcase, of course, there are going to be a ton of games there. I made a list here of every game that I think we will see, and I'll let you know if I think it's going to get a release date. So, first up, Spider-Man 2. This is a guarantee slam dunk, 100% going to be the headline game, I think, of this showcase. It's Sony's biggest game for the end of the year, and since this showcase is allegedly happening around the release date of Final Fantasy 16, I think all will probably get for that game would be like a launch trailer or something like that. You know, like a new trailer or like a new DLC announcement, something kind of small that just says, hey, this game's about to come out or will be out if this does happen after May 25th and you should be excited for it or go check it out. So with that being said, Spider-Man is the biggest game to come out this year from Sony regardless. So yeah, I think this is going to get a huge gameplay reveal. We'll learn if it has co-op. We'll learn more about the story. We'll get more than just a trailer, I think. On top of that, I think we'll also get some plates for the console, a new DualSense announcement, something related to Spider-Man 2 outside of just the game, because I feel like because it's a Marvel game, because it's a sequel to one of Sony's biggest and best-selling games ever, they're really going to hammer the marketing on this one and do their best to get people as excited as possible to play Spider-Man 2. I also think it's a slam dunk guarantee that we'll get a release date for this game, just knowing that it's coming out later in the year and we've heard nothing from it, them coming out and saying, look, here's the gameplay, here's the story set up. Here's everything new in the new version of Manhattan this will probably take place in. Get excited for it. It's coming out in September because I think it's probably going to come out around the same time as the original Spider-Man did. The next game that I think we'll hear a lot more about is Silent Hill 2, the remake from Bloober Team. I know Silent Hill fans are like not into this for some reason since they'll never be happy. Uh, the more I see Silent Hill fans talk about Silent Hill, I think they're fans of not liking Silent Hill more than they are of the actual franchise. I personally am very excited for this. I played Silent Hill 2 on my Steam Deck last October. It, it's like a dated game, right? If you've never played it before, it doesn't really hold up all that well in the gameplay department, but where it does hold up is in the actual gameplay design. Like, the mini open world is super creepy. I love the story as well. All the cutscenes were great, and I think if Bloober Team brings their talent of, like, graphical fidelity and actual scares to this, it could turn out really cool. And also the fact that Sony thought good enough of this to make sure it's going to be an exclusive, this could probably be the biggest Silent Hill game ever in terms of sales, and I guess just overall general hype, right? Like, Silent Hill is one of those niche franchises that the cool kid at school would talk about where everyone else was talking about Resident Evil. He'd be like, yo, have you played Silent Hill 2 or 3 or 4? And then the series kind of takes a nosedive after that. Sticking with Konami, we've also heard that Metal Gear Solid 3 is getting a remake. This is a little weird to me just because, I don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't start with the PS1 game that's only been remade on the GameCube and people widely consider that remake to not be very good compared to the original game. Metal Gear Solid 1 is awesome, and I feel like it's the perfect time to kind of go back to where it all started. It's been so long since the original Metal Gear Solid came out, so yeah, I would really like to see a remake of that. I see the logic in remaking 3 because chronologically, I think that's the earliest one in the series. Like, you've got Big Boss in that game uh, back in the Cold War, and then it works its way up to Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, and and then four, but still, I would like to see the first one before that. I'm not going to complain though. Metal Gear Solid 3 is my second favorite in the franchise. My number one favorite is definitely Peace Walker, which is a direct sequel to Metal Gear Solid 3. And ironically, I 
liked it more after I beat Metal Gear Solid 3 because of the fact that it's a direct sequel. But once I beat Metal Gear Solid 3 and then I went to Peace Walker, I was like, this is my favorite Metal Gear Solid game. And then finally, sticking with Konami, the other rumor about them that we're hearing is that there's going to be a new Castlevania game announced. Now this, I am really curious about because I don't know if it's going to go 3D and be more like the new God of War or pretty much every other Sony game, or if it's going to be pixel art, a 2D game like the old Castlevania style games. Now there is one game series that's really getting me excited about the thought of a 3D Castlevania coming out, and that's Jedi Survivor, right? Like you've got the melee combat, you got the force powers, but the way the levels are designed is it's set up like a Metroidvania, right? You unlock shortcuts, you unlock powers that let you unlock different areas of every world in that game that you can come back to later on when you've got those powers. That is like classic Castlevania. That's how they all worked back in the day. So yeah, you have an example right there of a really good formula to follow for a new Castlevania game. I'm also curious who would be working on it. I remember when God of War Ragnarok came out, Sony Santa Monica, the director of God of War Ragnarok, was like, that's his dream game. He would love to remake Castlevania Symphony of the Night, and I feel like that's the perfect like marriage of a franchise with a developer right there. I think it's kind of like too good to be true, especially since like God of War Ragnarok kind of took up the whole studio's time. We've got the Konami triple threat right there that I think we're definitely going to see at this showcase because uh, we were supposed to hear about it last year at E3, but then Konami pulled out. So they've been working on these games for a while. I'm excited about that. Another game that I think we'll get a short update on is Death Stranding 2. I think the turnaround time in this game is going to be a lot shorter than the first one, even though that was the quickest turnaround for a Kojima game. They know what they're doing, right? Like this is a direct sequel to Death Stranding, the open world walking simulator. I'm assuming that they've got everything streamlined in terms of actually making the open world and the gameplay techniques and all that stuff, but the story is what's going to take the longest since Kojima does motion capture and gets like actual actors to fly out and be in his game, and then he like is a perfectionist. He has to edit everything and make sure it all looks amazing. So yeah, I think we'll see this at the show. I don't think the release date will be in 2023. I think it'll be in 2024. The wild card game is definitely the Knights of the Old Republic remake. Now, if you asked me about a year ago, I would have said, yeah, we'll definitely see at least some gameplay play or some like updated knowledge on what this game is going to be. But after hearing that the original developer, Aspire, was taken off the project and it was handed over to Saber, it's giving me really strong Dead Island 2 vibes that this is going to be kicked down the road for quite a while and potentially never come out. I mean, I get why Sony would want to buy exclusivity on this because KOTOR is like one of the best, most well-remembered Star Wars games ever. But yeah, I think they know they need to get it right. I'm also kind of 50-50 on seeing Ghost to Tsushima 2. The one thing I always hear about Sucker Punch is that they're a lot smaller than people think, which, you know, makes a lot of sense when you consider the games that they made before uh, Ghost of Tsushima, but I'm assuming they've hired up a lot since that game came out, since it was such a massive release for Sony. A lot of people actually listed it as their game of the year that year, so you can kind of see why people are excited for Ghost of Tsushima 2. If we don't get a release date or an announcement for that, I would guess we might see a trailer for the movie and or get a PC release date for that game because Sony's been working on that for a really long time. But I'm mostly like 60-40, maybe 50-50 on whether or not we'll see Ghost of Tsushima 2 announced. Factions 2 better get a reveal at this. Look, last year we got the announcement that this is happening. All we've seen from Factions 2 is concept art, and it's kind of getting to the point where it's like, Naughty Dog, you gotta or get off the pot here. This was the multiplayer mode for The Last of Us Part 2, which came out in 2021. You separated it off, you made it into its own game. They made it seem like like it's going to be a three-player thing versus a whole open world situation. Uh, it's going to have a story. It's going to be set in the Last of Us universe. They're obviously treating it like a big game that's its own thing, so we'll probably get a $70 price tag. But regardless, we've only seen concept art from this. People know what's happening. You announced it so long ago. It's time to show off some gameplay of Factions 2. I think this is probably a guarantee that we'll see it. It's like 99% certainty on my part that we'll see The Last of Us Factions 2. And then finally, my last wildcard prediction is that we could see an update on Wolverine. We know that every Sony studio is working on at least a couple games at once. There are very few of them now that are making one game and just focusing on that. So we know that Insomniac's two big games they're working on right now are Spider-Man 2 and Wolverine. So I'm assuming that once Spider-Man 2 launches, they'll have a satellite team working on at least some DLC for that, but then full force will be pushed onto Wolverine. And now is the time, I think, to announce at least when we can kind of expect to hear more about that game or maybe even show off some gameplay because I'm very excited for that. Uh, it's going to be gory. They said it's going to be an M-rated game. That's what I want from 
and Wolverine. And I, I like I know what we're getting with Spider-Man, right? We're getting a Miles and Peter team-up game. Venom's gonna be in it. I'm sure it'll be like a 10 out of 10. Whereas with Wolverine, I'm just excited to hear more about that game. So yeah, there are definitely some big games that we know about coming to this showcase. I really hope there are a lot of games we don't know about as well. I want to see some new announcements so we don't just focus on the stuff we already know about that's coming in the near future. The other thing I think we can expect this summer is a whole bunch of hardware announcements. We know the PS5 is slated to come out later this year. Developers have had it in their hands for a while, and the reason for that is that it's not really a huge departure from the current PS5, right? Like, the only key difference is that it's going to have a detachable disk drive. What we've heard from Tom Henderson and other leakers is that if you put these side by side, right? Like, you take the launch PS5, which is the current PS5, and put it next to the new PS5, the only hardware difference is going to be a little USB cord sticking out of the back of the side plate that the disk drive is on, and that's going to connect into a new USB port on the back of the console. But other than that, it's going to be largely the same thing. And I feel like once that comes out, though, we'll start seeing special edition consoles. The first one I think we're going to get is Spider-Man 2. Of course, we do have the one in Japan right now for Final Fantasy 16, but when Spider-Man 2 comes out, I think that's when you're going to get a bundle with the faceplates and potentially a custom controller, or at the very least, the faceplates, and then you'll be able to purchase separately a custom controller that goes along with Spider-Man 2. We also have two new headsets coming out with this console to look forward to. One of them is going to be a set of earbuds, which I am really excited for. There is a set of earbuds you can get for the PlayStation 5 right now. I'll have them linked down in the description. They are called the Razer Hammerhead Hyperspeed, and the PS5 edition comes in white. I have the PC version of these headphones. They have awesome sound quality, especially the bass. I use them with my Steam Deck all the time, but people have nothing but great things to say about the PS5 version. And the cool thing about the Hyperspeed model is that it comes with a dongle. So if you connect that to your PS5, your PC, your Steam Deck, or even your Switch, I'm pretty sure, you'll be able to use these with no latency, which is the biggest problem with Bluetooth headphones. So Sony is apparently taking Razer on with those. And then just like with the PS4 generation, we're going to get an updated version of the Pulse Wireless 3D headset. So yeah, things are looking really good uh, there with accessories for this new PS5. And then we also have the Sony Q-Lite to look forward to, which like, look, I, I don't know. I, I'm just not super stoked on this idea at all. I don't really like cloud streaming games. I've talked about it here on the channel before, and this is taking it one step further. Not only is it not going to be able to play games natively on the device, but it's not even going to be trying to stream games from the PlayStation plus cloud, it's going to be streaming games from your console. So not only do you need to have good Wi-Fi at your house where your console is plugged in, you also need to have good Wi-Fi or cellular connection where you're at. Now, obviously the use case for this would probably be being in your house. It's basically like a wireless Wii U where you only have the one screen there. So if someone else is using the TV, you can stream your PS5 games to your handheld, but you can do this with so many other devices right now, whether it's your cell phone, your Steam Deck, your Logitech G Cloud, whatever it is that you have. I mean, even your iPad or your laptop can stream PS5 games to it from your actual console already. I'd much prefer Sony uh, maybe kill off PSVR 2 and go back to focusing on handhelds. I don't know why the Vita's failure made them just totally give up on handhelds, but I think that was a huge mistake, especially with the success of stuff like the Switch, the Steam Deck, and now the upcoming ROG Ally. People want to play games on handhelds, and Sony was making some of the best handheld games ever back in the day. So yeah, instead of this cute or more PSVR 2 stuff, I'd say focus less on those and more on a new PlayStation Vita. But you know, I, don't, I don't think that's in the works, which really suck. And then finally, the last piece of hardware that could be announced this summer, but I don't really think is going to be, is the PS5 Pro. What we've heard most recently is that it is 100% happening. It's just like not happening anytime soon. First party developers are going to get it within the next couple months, and then third party developers are going to get it once the first party developers give their feedback. Feedback. So this thing is in active development, but in terms of being announced this summer or even coming out this year, I don't think that's really going to happen. I think this thing is a 2024 or even 2025 uh, scenario that we're looking at with the PS5 Pro. So yeah, recap of the hardware. We've got the PS5 Slim probably coming out later this year. We've got a refreshed slate of accessories for the PlayStation 5 with two new headsets. And then we've got a handheld that uh, does remote play from your PS5 to the handheld called the Q-Lite, and that should be coming out this year. So I think all of that stuff has great odds of being announced at the showcase, except for the PS5 Pro. And then the last thing I think we could also see around the time of the showcase is a software update for the PlayStation 5. There are really only a few features left that people really want with this thing, but they are important features. The first one being a web browser. The PS5 is a great streaming device, so yeah, I'd love to see a web browser. 
on the PlayStation 5. Of course, the biggest feature people want is themes because every PlayStation console has had them except for like the PS2 and PS1. Starting with the PS3 and PSP, you could get so many different themes for your console and it was awesome. So yeah, I'd love to have that on the PlayStation 5, but even if they took the current themes that you get when you put a disc in your PS5 and then it like changes the background and the music and some of the colorways of your console, that would be good enough in my opinion. I'd pay a couple bucks for at least a few of those, especially around some of my favorite games. And then finally, my pie in the sky wish is PS3 emulation for the PlayStation 5. Look, it needs to happen. We know Sony has it ready. They just want to make sure that they have it working with every game before they release it. I don't care what they got to do. That would not only make PS Plus Premium so much more enticing to a lot of people, myself included. It would just be great to revisit some of the best games Sony's ever put out. There are so many great games for the PlayStation 3 that you can't play on the PS5 that would make it awesome just to have that PS Plus Premium subscription so you could play a bunch of PS3 games. Streaming gets the job done, I guess, but I don't think it's really that popular with most people. So that's what you have to look forward to with the PlayStation 5 this summer. Sony's been pretty quiet lately. It seems like they're working on some really big announcements. This really could be the true beginning of next gen for Sony, and I'm here for it. Let me know what you think or if there's any features or games that you want to see announced that I missed down in the comments below. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is a tool that gives you a beautiful and powerful online platform to create your own amazing website. With Squarespace, you can not only connect with your audience, but you can also generate revenue through gated members only content. In addition to that, you can manage your members, send them emails, and get audience insights in one simple, easy to use program. Squarespace also lets you create a community with a fully integrated commenting system. You can even use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, schedule, and share your posts too. Squarespace also has extensions, which are powerful third-party tools that let you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items. And finally, they also make it simple to display posts from your social media profiles on your own website. If that sounds cool to you, go to squarespace.com for a free trial now. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash psready to save 10% on your first purchase of a new website or domain. Huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video.